difficult to defeat. Now, he doesn't always win those, you know, grand chess tour and big events he plays in, but he often goes plus one, plus two. What does that mean? He'll draw about seven games, win two, things like that. He is just that hard to take down. Now, he did lose uh, in the tie break in the FIDE Grand Prix to Lenier Dominguez. So he may have some recent memories that are he's not too fond of in rapid. But if anyone can get over it, I do believe it's Wesley. He generally is very calm, cool, and collected. And he's playing this line. And when you allow the knight check, the king goes to e2. This is a very funny variation. Uh, but Wesley voluntarily saying, I don't need a castle. It's just that the bone cloud is so popular. Even if it's a delayed bone cloud, it counts. And he doesn't go back to e2 to repeat moves. So <laughs> we have a game. <laughs> game one now after knight takes c1, rook takes c1. And, I mean, and when we look at this, we know White can castle, but White's developed three minor pieces and a rook, and Black finally just developed his first minor piece. So it should be some huge advantage for White just when we think about that, but it's hard to crash through because the f7, e6 pawns I mean the bishop on c4 staring into a brick wall. Uh, now e5 is played to allow this knight to come to e4, but where to from there? The d6 square is covered. You can't go to f6. There's a g pawn covering that. So the knight can go to e4 at some point, but it's not clear exactly how white is going to proceed. Not clear, but it seems promising with that much space advantage and the ideas that you have showed, Robert. So let's see if Wesley will proceed uh, with any of those ideas with the knight maneuver, or he says first it's queen e3. Um, further improving the queen's position and uh, just pointing out that black is still so undeveloped. Where is the black king going? I know white hasn't castled, but it's safer than the black king for now. And that's a good point. And people think you need to castle to have king safety. All of white's pieces are kind of around the king and none of blacks are. And at some point, that queen that just came up from E2 was trying to go to F4 and then maybe a knight G5 to follow. So black does need to be careful. And even castling queenside, which is an option, there's a rook on C1 that's awaiting that king to go that way. Look at this king to G1. Queen takes B2. Isn't that a free pawn? Don't just take pawns because you think they're free. Rook to B1. Uh, that pawn on B7 is way more valuable. So do not take this pawn on B2 you will regret it it is a poison pawn indeed so paravian is thinking what to do instead i agree with you that castle queen side looks very scary with the rook on c1 he plays knight to d4 if white takes on d4 c takes d4 is a baby fork mm -hmm. <laughs> but we as we know terms. yep but as we know babies can kick and scream and well i think white's going to be the one kicking and screaming out of disappointment if you fall into that so knight d4 it advances the knight the bishop can replace the knight on c6 and that will put pressure on this knight on f3 and as we're saying you can't take this knight on d4 not now and not for the foreseeable future so black can keep the knight there make a move like bishop c6 make a move like bishop e7 and then decide where that king goes because you don't want to rush a move like castle's queenside when there's a rook on c1 happy to meet it as it ventures over to the queenside indeed so black plays instead bishop to e7 but even now that white that the the king side is open for a possible for a potential king side castle for black it is very scary when you see the d3 bishop already staring into your soul and now after h5 white has clear intentions on the king side Anna, you may be one of the nicest human beings on the planet, but something about you saying staring into your soul, it's scared. <laughs> like, I actually felt fear. Staring into your yeah. soul. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't want that to happen. Please, no, Anna, but you're right that, you know, this king, it, it's not finding shelter, but what you were just saying before is such a good point about how White's king, that when it was on F1, was still safe. The king on E8 is perfectly safe where it is. There's nothing to attack it for now. So you don't need to rush your king to one side of the board or the other. You want to continue to improve your pieces and see how white is continuing. H5 clearly saying, please castle kingside. I will, I will try to checkmate you there. And if you castle queenside, you already have tactical problems, as we were talking about earlier. There's a rook on c1, so knight takes d4, pawn takes. There's a discovered check, and you don't lose the game because, you know, even if I win your queen, the queen on e3 is loose. But still, that's not something that you want to walk into. Absolutely. So it is a very difficult decision for Paravian to take now. He plays bishop c6 to further improve uh, his light squared bishop. Makes perfect sense. But after bishop e4, Wesley said, I also have a light squared bishop. We could trade and then my knife will be very happily placed on e4. 
and wow, he decides, Ooh. Robin does, to castle queenside. And your idea of bringing knight to e4 makes perfect sense to me. I wonder if there are tactics. That's the first thing that I'm thinking about when there's a rook, there's a king on the same line. Maybe I can go for a tactic. For example, in bishop c6, that's step one. If the queen takes on c6, I'm already looking at ideas with the move b4, or even knight takes d4 here, trying to open the c file, because after knight d4, c takes d4, yes, my queen, yes, my knight, that's a baby fork. But if I just move my queen somewhere, even to e1, you can't take on c3 because rook c3 wins the queen. So there are tactics available. I saw Wesley, he did a rook lift and he decides to play with his h1 rook, get that into the game uh, with rook h3 and Anna the king smartly ran away to b8. It, it is a must. As you showed, those ideas, the tactical patterns of the C file, the king is better off running away from all that danger. The king on B8 now is fine, but the C file, that's still a pin when it comes to the rook pinning the C5 pawn with the queen standing on C6. A good thing for Paravian is that his rook is also guarding the D4 knight, so I don't think any of those tactical patterns were working. Knight E2 now puts further pressure on D4. Mm -hmm. And it's important for Paravian because he doesn't really want to just trade knights. His bishop on e7, it's a decent piece. It defends the c5 pawn, but it won't really be able to get active. So the knight, I think, for black is what keeps him with the slight advantage. So the move knight back to f5 is somewhat tempting. Uh, you can trade knights for sure, but if, especially if you take the f3 knight, you bring that rook into the game, and that's not what you want. So if you're going to take a knight, take the e2 knight. Absolutely, you don't want that h3 rook to suddenly appear on the queen side where all the action is happening. Um, let's see if if uh, Paravian will end up taking then on e2, as you mentioned, or does he have any other alternative to go for? Well, he can play knight f5. I, I don't want to allow the knight to be captured on d4, but even knight f5 is a difficult move to play because you're retreating. At some point, the move g4 may force your knight back to the d4 square anyway and by making your knight f5 move you're moving your pieces away from your queen side which is where the black king is so I, I don't think it's an easy move to play even though as i'm describing i don't want to trade knights i may be in a position where i don't really have a better choice it seems like he will have to go for that um but he has taken quite some time and then plays knight f5 mm -hmm. so i'm mainly curious what the follow-up is going to be because this queen let's say goes to b3 over to the queen side, right? What's black's next move once the queen lands over there? I think black has to play on the king side because that's where white's king is. So move like g5. I, I, I know it's hard to play that move, but I'm already looking at a g5 trying to go for another baby fork. And hey, I'm still thinking about, oh, wait, g5 works? I like your g5 a lot. And now that the queen is on f4, it would be with the tempo. And it, it's played. Paravian <laughs> goes for g5, pawn sacrifice, but it is a very, very risky pawn to take. It's opening up the G5 right in front of the White King. Yeah, in fact, that would just lose the queen right away. And that's why Anna is getting excited here because there is already checkmate on the table. You lose your queen. You can't move it away because the queen lands on G2 with mate. So Anna has to move G5. Wesley walked right into that idea. And I was mentioning G5 as a way to open up the king side. If pawn takes G6, pawn takes G6. It's not checkmate, but there's a rook on H8, a second rook that can go there. And that's where the white king is, which means there's going to be an attack. Incredible uh, how Paravian managed to not only develop his pieces from a difficult opening stage, Wesley did have a very comfortable and advantageous position, it seemed, but now the tables are turning and it's Black who takes the initiative with the pawn push to G5. Wesley must not have seen this move. He, he is now taking the time to find the best response to it. And he takes, and he takes an H8. So that is with the sign of a great chess player. You're making a decision you don't want to make, but understanding that the alternatives are worse. So Wesley, he probably missed G5. He decided to spend some time here, bring his knight to C3. Now the knight can come back to E4. And honestly, the position isn't that bad for white, despite this rook being on the open file, despite the white king being less safe. At some point, you know, knight E4, maybe even G4, this, this pawn on F7, the F file in general, is better for white because that F7 pawn, it's a bit loose, it's easy to target. And that bishop on E7, Anna, that's the worst piece on the board. 
It is, it is. And as you said, the, on the long run, this F7 pawn will be a huge target for white. So as excited as I was about G5, maybe now after the trade of the rooks, and um, it is not as dangerous as it seems yet. It is now down to the last five, six minutes of the game. So we are almost in blitz mode with a two second increment. I wonder if Paravian will find a way to continue with ambitious moves or will he have to settle to um, a more passive choice and try to defend? What do you yeah. think, Robert? Is there a way? G5 again? <laughs> <laughs> he answered. <laughs> you know, he answered. He says G5. And now after knight takes G5, bishop takes G5, that's not the problem because there's no second rook, so you can't go rook G you lose the rook. The problem would have been a different tactic, rook h4, hitting the queen, and the knight doesn't keep its defender. So that was the main idea that Paragon was exploiting. And Wesley says, I see g5 the second time. Queen e4 is played. The queen draws back to d7. And now, and I'm looking at this position. I still think that black is doing well for the time being. But I do think, oh, by the way, Wesley offered a draw. I didn't notice that. I just looked at the, the, the chat there. He offered a draw, and Paravian made his move and said no. Wow. <laughs> wow, Wesley. So the higher rated player with the white pieces offers a draw and David Paravian says, no, thank you, sir. And not the first time that Paravian's done that. I believe uh, in his matchup against Jan Nepomnesi, Jan offered a draw and Paravian said no. But here, King G2, now the white rook might come to H1 and it's not a checkmating attack, but that's a nice open file and the rook on C1 would love to shuffle to the other side of the board. It is. I really like that the rook lift over to age one. The age file has been very important both for black and now it could be for white after king g2. He pushes d3. Why do you think he decided to go for d3 instead of uh, king g2 rook age one? I guess g4 was a threat that I didn't even look at, but the pawn on d2 would have been loose. I had the same question as you. I was like, d3? Why? <laughs> you know, why are you making that move? But now I see why. That g4 mm -hmm. would have kicked the knight away from defending this pawn on d2. So it does make sense uh, just to start in this manner, and king g2 is not going anywhere. And Anna, there could be king f1 back, king e2, because the king could be safe in the center. I like it. Again, that Bonclad setup has, we have <laughs> seen that earlier in this game in the opening and it could return to e2. Instead, he chooses king to g2, the more classical approach to where you place your king and the rook now could go to the open h5. That's right. And once the rook gets to h1, it's trying to go down to h7. The one thing that black can target is this d3 pawn. Now that it's pushed up there, it's not defended by any a piece besides the queen. So you can bring a second piece to attack. Uh, but uh, even the move g4 will be considered at any moment because this knight doesn't have too many squares to go to. And if it's relegated to h6, nah, you don't want that because then the rook comes to h1 with tempo. So yeah. uh, rook h8 played fighting for the open file. And also making sure that after g4, black could go for knight h4 and trade at least the knight instead of having to retreat it. Uh, you're very right about that, Robert. This, this g4 has to be taken into account either now or later because that is the uh, one of the best, one of the most active pieces of black, that knight on f5. That's right. And just, you know, I saw knight a4 is played, but just show this very quickly, that if the queens were trading in this position, black's in huge trouble. Because I'm going to force the queens off, and, and not in a way that ruins everything, but just to sort of show that if we get a position like this, this pawn on h4 is terribly placed. White plays f4, g5, and can then go win the pawn. So a change in pawn structure after the move g4 and uh, knight h4 stuff, that could be bad for black. And that's, I think, why Paravi put the rook on h8 so that if g4 happens, the rook can take on h4 and black's pawn structure remains a little healthier. Yes, makes perfect sense. So Wesley decides to now shift the focus to the queen side since black was ready to meet g4 and rook h1 uh, with trades. Now, instead, he's shifting all his attention toward a potential rook lift toward b3, which was stopped by knight d4. But now the queen has been moved to e4 to fully control the long diagonal. But I like your idea, and so does Wesley. The rook is coming to b3. You may take the knight on a4. You may take the knight on d4. But you can pre-move rook b3 here if you're Wesley so. So it's queen a4, rook b3. It's a mate threat. There's knight c6 check taking advantage of the pin on this pawn. So I think that Paravin has to be very careful as, yes, the queen can stop checkmate at one. But in a situation like this, if you move your king to c8, you'll see the evaluation bar go very high because knight a5 brings a third attacking piece against this pawn on b7. 
seven and you only have two pieces defending it, you're going to lose the game. That is such an amazing attack coming out of the blue. It felt like it was a balanced position with only a few pieces on the board. And now Paravian is the one uh, that is hugely in trouble. Wait, if this is the current position or very similar? They reached yeah. a, a different one. No, the knight c6 check happened just to uh, show everybody oh, here. And he would, king, same. he would king a8 though, so he can bring his rook to defend. I mean, barely. <laughs> This looks bad, oh. though, right, Anna? It does. Looks very suspicious. So if knight a5, his idea is to defend b7 with rook to b8. Oh, but Wesley blunders. The bar has jumped fully in Black's favor after rook to b6. Why? Because oh, is rook takes a... Oh, my gosh. Queen c7. The, the rook has nowhere to go. And if you play rook a6, pawn takes... You do have a knight discovery. And then queen b7, and the queens come off, and you're in a losing ending. And even the white king is on the same diagonal, so there's no way out of the queen trade. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that, and it's very straightforward, too. This is uh, queen c7 played by Paravian, and Anna, that's, that's game. Wesley wanted to find the combination, a winning tactic there, and instead... It is him who is losing material now of the queen to c7. No, it's it's done. It's completely done. Ch take it by c4. The knight's trapped with uh, rook c5 coming. And if you try to free your knight, then you free the pass one. That's it. It's resignation. David Paravian. Look how happy he is and relieved. Because this is it. It means Paravian is now onto the semifinals to 